Hi, I wanted to introduce you to Tanmay. Tanmay is kind of this young, enthusiastic, creative, technical mastermind of sorts who has uh, really developed skills using IBM's Watson. But first, let me let Tanmay introduce himself. Tanmay, do you want to tell folks a little bit about you? All right, so uh, first of all, hello, uh, and thank you. Uh, as you know, my name is Tanmay Bakshi. Uh, I'm 12 years old, I'm in the seventh grade, and I live just outside Toronto in Brampton, Canada. Uh, now, essentially, I am a software developer specializing in Apple development along with Java and Python. Uh, I'm a keynote speaker, author, algorithmist, and of course, YouTuber. Uh, and so, you know, basically, I like to develop apps, uh, and in general, uh, you know, continue with more projects like IoT, uh, as I said, I'm an author. I've actually written a book called Hello Swift, iOS App Programming for Kids and Other Beginners. Uh, and so essentially, as, as the subtitle suggests, it's a book for kids and other beginners to learn iOS app development through Swift from scratch. Uh, and I also have a YouTube channel where I like to teach things like uh, programming, algorithms, IBM Watson specifically also, math, and even science. Uh, and so that's a little intro about me. Okay, so the reason that I wanted to introduce uh, you guys to Tanmay, is that Watson is kind of this amazing tool. You might have heard about Watson from the Jeopardy participation that it had, where basically it was a very successful competitor on Jeopardy. But what is Watson? Well, Watson is basically this machine learning sort of brain that lives in the cloud that you can uh, call, as in like you can have programs say, hey Watson, we need this from you. And so if you guys have been in any of Easel's growth hacking classes, you'll know that we build in automations. And so what Tanmay and I are going to collaborate on is creating some uh, recipes, some sort of tech mashup recipes for you guys that use Watson. And so what Tanmay is going to do now is tell you four of the services that Watson offers. And while you listen to Tanmay, what I could use and what Tanmay and I could use is basically some thoughts for you, if you can leave them in the comments, about applications of Watson that might be especially useful for you in your business. All right, so Tammy, take it away. What are some of the four services that, that Watson primarily offers? Yeah, I uh, also just one more thing I'd like to okay. add uh, is I'm also an IBM Honorary Cloud Advisor and IBM Champion for Cloud, just to add that in. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, continuing. Now, these are, these are sort of four main services that we uh, are really interested in. Now, again, there are around 20 more, 24 in total, 26 maybe now with the newer services added. However, there are a lot more APIs than these, but these are the ones we're currently focusing on as we progress, as we create more applications. We will, of course, uh, use more APIs and introduce you to more of them, uh, but for now, these are the four main ones that we are interested in. Now, an API, just for you guys watching, sorry to interrupt you, Tanmay, API means basically you ask Watson for something and Watson gives you something back, kind of. Yes, exactly. Okay. You give Watson some data, it thinks about it, it returns something back to you. Okay. That's what okay. Apple, uh, yeah, so Continuing though, uh, now first of all, the first uh, sort of API that we want to use uh, is called the Natural Language Classifier. Now, IBM wants Natural Language Classifier. Essentially, what that does is it takes natural language and classifies it for you. Now, what does this mean? Basically, you can give it, hey, a thousand uh, male person's names uh, and a thousand female person's names, and then if you were to put in another one that it hasn't ever heard before, that's not in those two thousand names, then it would it would be able to use pattern recognition, which is an, uh, you know, a set of algorithms, in order to determine that, hey, I've never heard this name before, but I am so and so percent confident that this is a male name or a female name. Uh, and that's essentially one thing that you can do with the natural language classifier. Then again, there are many more things that you can classify. You can classify between 10 different things. Uh, but then again, uh, the simplest example that I can currently give you is sort of uh, distinguishing between, for example, a male and a female name. So just to kind of wrap up, so basically, in natural language classifier, the NLC can help us by saying, we think that based on what you've told us, that this belongs in this category. Exactly. Okay, cool. So let's go to the next one.
Yes. Continuing. Next, retrieve and rank. Now, retrieve and rank is essentially like a cognitive uh, search engine, I guess you could call it. Now, first of all, a traditional search engine, Google, Bing, or Yahoo, that does mostly keyword matching. Uh, I mean, sometimes, you know, Google is advancing and it's using things like machine learning. However, the traditional search engine does keyword matching. It says, you know what, if you were to ask it, a let's say, who is the CEO of a company, uh, and it would just say, you know what, if the, someone so words appear in this uh, sort of document, then I'm going to put this document in the search results for the user to be able to see. However, what Retrieve and Rank does is it gets across that and uses cognitive or thinking and actually thinks about what some documents could be that the user would like. And essentially what this means is that, hey, for example, you could take, let's say, the FAQ of a site, for example, Gmail. Let's pretend its FAQ was 20 times bigger, okay? It would be huge, first of all. Now, there are some, let's say, duplicate articles or some very similar articles that users will have to go through to find which one is correct. For example, you forgot your password, however, there's another sort of uh, pin that you have as well, and there's a different procedure to reset both. Then the user would have to find which document to use in order to reset the password. Okay, what Watson does here is it essentially instead of like traditional Google, what it will do is it will have, it will think about your question. You asked, how do I reset my password? Not how do I reset my pin, for example, or how do I reset my username? And so what it'll say is, you know what, he asked for specifically password, and so it will think about that and return to you specifically, you know what, I think he, this article will help you, uh, and this article is how to reset your password. So okay? what I'm hearing there is it's kind of a smarter way to search, because for example, if somebody said, somebody goes to your FAQ as you, as you proposed, so like if you watching, if you have some type of, uh, of, of help desk or sort of set of blogs, for example, that say how you do something with your website or whatever, then if you asked directly, like you said, how do I reset my password, maybe the keywords would match up well. Exactly. But if you said, but where Watson comes in is maybe you would say, I got locked out of my account. Then right. Watson would be able to say, oh, I think you must be looking for a way to reset your password. So that's the difference is that it expands the world of sort of smart recognition of what you're looking for. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and so that's essentially what Retrieve and Rank does. And it also gives you sort of a percentage of confidence that I am, let's say, 94% confident this is the correct answer uh, or this is the correct document that you're looking for. It doesn't just give you the document. It also gives you, you know what, so you can actually use your sort of, you know, just a little bit of, you can think a little bit and say, you know what, it's only around 30% confident about this, so it's most probably not right. But I can try it anyway sort of thing. Okay, uh, I see. That's another really advantage that it does give you, the confidence value as well. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Third service. Yes, the third service that we're really interested in is called Tradeoff Analytics. Now, Tradeoff Analytics, why we're so interested in that, is because Tradeoff Analytics give you, gives you a simple way to actually, you know, make smart decisions. Okay, the computer can simulate uh, a human brain and actually make a decision depending on many factors combined into one average. For example, let's say you were to give it, you know what, in this week I have to do these 20 things and on a, on a scale of 1 to 10, each one is this hard, and on a scale of 1 to 10, or actually, I mean, uh, this is the date that it's due, or in how many days it's due. Mm -hmm. And so you can say to trade off now, to say, hey, I want to do whatever's due first, first, and I want to do the easiest things first. Mm -hmm. Now, it would just say, you know what, whatever's due first, do that first. No, no, no. It's actually going to take into account how hard whatever you want to do is, uh, or how easy it is, uh, and, you know, get an average of that and use its sort of cognitive technology in order to make a decision, and, you know what, it's going to say, you know what, here's a list that this is how you should do your things, or, or this is how you should finish your list, and this is how you'll be most probable in order to actually get all your things done, and, of course, with that comes a, co a the, um, confidence value of how sure it is about that, which is really sort of, again, an advantage to it. So basically it's a way for this computer to take, say, this is what you've told me is important to you, therefore this is what I think. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yes. Fourth service. Fourth service. Okay. Yes. So, essentially, 
Fourth service is visual recognition. Now, visual recognition is very huge, I guess. It has a lot of possibilities. But one thing that I want to highlight this time is, for example, what you could do is, first of all, visual recognition is an API in which you can give it, let's say, 100 images of a brand logo. OK, and if you were to give it another picture with lots of stuff, and a little brand logo, it'll say, you know what, I saw that brand logo in that image. All right, and so that's essentially what uh, trade-off analytics, I mean, uh, visual recognition can do for you. It's classifying uh, based on images. It's basically the natural language classifier, except with images. Uh, okay. And so a really good use case for that could be, for example, uh, you can sort of enter, you know what, uh, a thousand Coca-Cola logos, okay, and a thousand Pepsi logos, and then you could give it let's say 5,000 different tweets with pictures in them, and you could take those pictures and say, you know what, this many percentage of the pictures had no logo in them, this many percentage had a Pepsi logo in them, and this many percentage had a Coca-Cola logo in them. And you can see how many of your users want use Coca-Cola, how many of the users use Pepsi, and how many don't at all. All and right. So what we need your help with here is that, like, and I found this, is that, you know, technology is cool. Technology alone is cool, but where technology is really awesome is when you use technology to solve meaningful problems. So that's why Tammy and I have created this little video here. We're, we're doing multiple methods to try to collect uh, opinions from people like you who are watching about what, how we, we can use these technologies and give you a really easy way to use these technologies to create some type of solution. And then that'll be Tammy and I's job. We're going to try to Make the solution easy enough so that you can use this with no coding and you can actually go and do it. So please, right now in the comment section, tell us what you want to see. Uh, what you want to see from Watson and, and we can mash up other technologies too, Google Analytics or Google Sheets. And if we see that people have upvoted your suggestion and we've heard that in other places, we'll try to create it. Exactly. Okay, and I'll just say that also in the comment section here, I'm going to leave a... Uh, link to Tanmay's YouTube channel. And if this is on Tanmay's YouTube channel, we'll put a link to the Easel YouTube channel so you can kind of see Definitely. how this is all working out.